Okay, 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 okay. We should be able to align these things now. And both cameras are rolling. I'm gonna walk over here and uh, talk a little bit about Eden history and the preservation of real Eden history. See over here where lots of buses would have pulled in and dropped off children, and they would have entered a very large elementary and middle school here called Burton Grove behind the Moravian Church. A cross has fallen down here. It would be nice if they'd stand that back up, it's pretty visible. There's the church. Okay, we continue to look around this huge, a couple acre school property here, and there's nothing left. It's all gone. And when I lived here, when we were here back in uh, 1998, 99, this school was still standing, big, huge brick edifice. I'll find a picture online of it. It's all gone. What's up with that? Yeah, all gone. Even though it would have stood for another couple hundred years, even without any kind of improvement very much, there would have still been a stone building standing there. It could have been used for something. Just like the school out in Wentworth, the massive stone school in Wentworth. Which will probably be torn down and made into gravel and safety sorb, fresh brick, you know, knock it down, let someone else tote it off, sell it to them for next to nothing. Now you don't have to pay taxes on the building anymore. And uh, of course, make sure that you make sure that you loot that place real good first. And. Uh, yeah, here's another entrance steps for Burton Grove. Maybe this is where the neighborhood kids would have walked up. Look at that. Walking on down the steps. There's a piece of gutter. Excuse me, how long ago did the, the Burton Groves, you know, the stone building get torn down? Uh, how long ago did they tear down? Oh, I don't know. Was it like 15 years ago or so? Yeah, yeah. We've been here long, that long. Oh, okay. You haven't been here long? Okay. Well, now, we are walking behind the boulevard, which I think is the most solid example of what happens when a town doesn't preserve itself before it's too late. Right here, you're looking at future safety sword and other brick products. brick and you could just sell it for next to nothing. This used to be the Glasgow Music Store and I spent an enormous amount of time in this store while it was open. There's some more safety sore waiting to happen. Look at this. This right here was where the amplifiers were. Drum set up here counter over here with guitar pedals and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Greg, hey Bart. You got any ultra light gauge strings? 
in this only music store in the town where Charlie Poole was famous. You'd think that a music store would be around forever in a town that prides itself so much on its connection with Charlie Poole. I think what Eden likes most about Charlie Poole was his drinking habits. That is about the only remnant at one point gave me permission to come in here and hunt around look at this unbelievable right here this end is where the movie screen would have been that roof has seen better days I wonder if there had once been chandeliers hanging in here Oh man, this is this is majorly overgrown since the last time I was in. Gotta watch out for these blackberries, they hurt. You know, I just heard a, some kind of critter run off. Or maybe a big bird. Yeah. Here you are. Ain't this grand? Theater, abandon all hope ye who enter here. I think they're talking about Eden. Because as you can see, the Preservation Society blinked. Look at that fruit up there. There's fruit on those. Hanging in the wind. I actually heard them clonking against the building and wonder what they were. Yeah, there's the fruit of Eden's love for itself. Here we are, look at that. Speakers are gone, screen's gone. There's a tiny little mess of, up there that looks like it might have once been the projection room. I wrote an article for the Eden Daily News back before it got bought up by one of these conglomerates and actually reported on things and let people know what was going on in real time. The article was called Facelift. You can look it up in those archives. I don't remember what year it was. It might have been 1999. I liked this town immediately when I moved here. The only problem was they didn't like anybody who, as it turns out, wasn't going to be on their team on their terms and that just got a little bit more worse when I came to faith back in 2001. Oh my word, look at all that. Yep. How well preserved this is. 
You know, these 501c3s that say they care about things like history and the arts, business, tourism, and all of these other things that can be monetized. And we're living in a society where the holy word of God has been monetized to the point where people don't even feel like they need to read the Bible anymore because preacher isn't really holding us to the line about that. He just wants us to do what he says we should do. All kinds of attitudes and taking away is going on. Things for sure. They always got enough money to pay for the drinks and food they're going to eat while they sit there and talk about stuff that they will never do. They just won't do it. saying this French fella came over and he got a big grant from Aperture magazine, a photography magazine, and uh, we people who are kind of suckers for volunteering came down and we helped him clean it all out, drag a bunch of stuff to the road, get rid of all the mess of hornet's nests, and paper wasp nests and stuff. Flat of stairs right there in the front of it, and uh, a couple of small art shows for grown ups. Let's set up on the roof. Uh, happened here, one of which was in this front area here. I set up one sound generating station with some keyboards and loopers and stuff, and then over here in this other wing that comes off, I had a big metal assemblage that was made out of shelving hanging from the ceiling and it would spin and it had lights on it and I was improvising on it as though it were a percussion instrument which it was everything is a percussion instrument if you hit it and then in the back room back there behind the crux of things there was a bathroom and in there I had a movie that I had made with some more sound on it uh, playing through a big laptop computer kind of in the crux between the two locations where performances were occurring in there so that we could walk from, from one room to the another and have music all the way through, but it would be changing. Anyway, as you can see by the paint, this was just another way for some people that like to be in the newspaper to get their picture in the paper and then walk away from it after they'd gotten their little virtue signal out. That'll get them on another year on the uh, whatever board or the whatever chamber, or maybe even elected to city council because they have a photograph from the paper that says that they were a wonderful community servant without a follow-up article. Kind of sad. Oh, right now. We're right up here on Morgan Road. Oh, that house looks lovely. The way they're fixing it up. And as we look over here, we can see what was sort of like an old school uh, department store, sort of, or, or a place where people could rent business spaces. Um, I remember that there were some squatters hiding in there back in the day um, when I was working for the Room in the Inn homeless shelter here in Eden. And if you look up here, you'll see the Salvation Army building. And uh, it's pretty big. Nice water tower behind it. And uh, used to, years ago, gosh, it's probably been 20 years ago, um, my wife was uh, one of the original co coordinators of uh, the only homeless shelter that we were aware of that was helping folks in the wintertime here in town. And up there in the cafeteria of this Salvation Army building was where I got to administer the breathalyzer. <laughs> To people that wanted to spend the night and the rule was was that if you were drunk you couldn't spend the night and I'm not going to go into terrific detail about how people felt when I noticed that they were over the limit but they weren't too happy and I 
the worst case scenario was one night when a fella chased me into the <laughs> the walk-in freezer up there and I had to hold the handle on the other side of it <laughs> until somebody came and restrained him because he was pretty hell-bent on spending the night at the shelter but he had a little bit too much liquor in him this old schoolhouse here in here one time with percussion instruments after we painted it. The French artist got a whole bunch of money, I guess $100,000 to come to America and do art stuff. And uh, this town is always happy to accept volunteers. But uh, he never come back. He never come back, did he? <laughs> I was one of them knuckleheads they talked in to help paint this thing. I was under the impression that maybe they would do after school art programs or something here. That's what I was asking the city if they would do. I was teaching art at Leakesville, Douglas, and Stoneville at the time, and they're like, no, nah, we just want to get our pictures in the paper and then forget about it, you know? Ma'am? Yeah. Well, you know. Over where I live in Leakesville, you might, I'll turn this off. Here's the traffic circle for school. There's what's left of school. I don't even know what the name of this school is. I've been looking, but I can't find the name of the school. We've never been here to take a good look at it, neither. We used to go to church, Wesleyan Church when Wayne Johnson was alive. Anyway, here's another repurposed property from the Rockingham County School System. You gotta wonder, where did the money go when this school property was sold to them? Who obtained the payment? And looking right through this barbed wire. And where was that money spent after this school was sold and this acreage all around it? You just got to wonder. You could put a lot of houses on this. You could even put affordable housing on this. There's a lot of things you could do with land like this if you cared about your neighbor. But I suppose people are more concerned with kitchens and floors and uh, things like that. It's a really cool building. I've been looking at it for years. They put that metal roof up on it. And uh, it appears that the grounds over there go behind the house. And these playgrounds are uh, many of the schools around here that haven't been destroyed. It seems like the auditoriums are what seem or the gyms used to are the last remnant of the building to come down. Like I said, most of this school here has been sold and made into gravel and crushed brick, you know, to soak up oil spills in the garage. Huh. Here we are at the Rogan Park behind Eden City Hall. I kind of want to say thank you to the young officer that pulled me over because he saw that I was throwing my seatbelt on as soon as I saw him because I had forgotten to put it on and he pulled me over and told me exactly what I had just done and I said you're right officer I did exactly that and he checked my license and found out that I wasn't one of the bad guys and uh, let's see here Home Trust Bank, Homer Wright, 
course, the John Grogan family. You certainly expect them to be big donors here. And let's see. Oh. It's good to see. Miller Coors. They were still around back then. And here we are. Looking at some of these other folks. I can think of at least one that would be an embarrassment to my family. All-American, I don't know, I suppose in America nowadays it's pretty all-American to embezzle money from them. of their embezzlement, you know? Because when it's not your money, when it doesn't affect your bottom line, you can pick and choose who you'd like to share that with. Then they become indebted to you in a way that is even more powerful than all of that word of God you've been hearing all those years in church. that are all the same people sitting on these boards multiply doesn't seem like Raleigh's doing much auditing of these individuals and how that donated money is being used during times which some news stations are saying our country is falling apart with all of the troubles that are going on in this country. Nobody has any money in it. We need all these jobs and stuff to fix it, but it seems to me that it doesn't matter how much money you're making. What matters is how much extra you can get by associating with people who are getting away with something. It's a lovely park, isn't it? Look at this. Beautiful. Look at these old trees. I love it. I've come here to play music. One time when we had power outages because of the weather, I came here <coughs> to charge up my laptop and have some free bandwidth so that I could do my job and stuff. What a beautiful park. Here's one of these full square looking things that we see all over the place down here in the south. Otter, turtle, another otter, another turtle, and a couple of paddles. And to be honest with you, I don't know what those other things are. It might be beef jerky. Look at this park, it's great. Gee whiz, beautiful park like this, celebrating the city of Eden. You could think of the art they bought to put around in this park. It might have been offered to somebody from Rockingham County that was associated with the, uh, the various art organizations around there. I'd hire them to do it. 
they'd probably cut you a real good deal on it because they're from here. Those things are made of metal. They won't be there forever. You're going to have to keep varnishing them. They're nice. I like them. But they're not from here. Just like some of those donations that paid for this park weren't from that person's paycheck. They were from looted money that was used to consolidate the pride of life further in pursuit of lusts of the eye and lusts of the flesh. But people don't.